Welcome everybody to the Channel Vision Magazine webinar with Jabra, which will share with you its vision for the rapidly changing contact center. I'm your moderator, Bruce Christian, Senior Editor at Channel Vision Magazine. And our presenter today is Mike McIver, Business Development Manager from Jabra's Contact Center Solutions team. Welcome, Mike. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. Hello, everybody. And with that, let me turn it over to you, Mike. Thanks, Bruce. Appreciate it. And thanks, everybody, for attending today. Uh, as Bruce said, my name is Mike McIver. I'm the Partner and Business Development Manager for the Contact Center Practice here at Jabra. Um, today, I'm going to be reviewing a few trends, insights, and statistics into the Contact Center. Uh, be, di be discussing the importance of using the right tool for the right job specifically headsets in the contact center, uh, reviewing our portfolio of products, and then discussing our analytics that can be derived from our, our digital endpoint uh, devices. Let's start by taking a look at kind of what we're all dealing with today, which is the, the versatility and the new normal uh, in the contact center. If we look back, you know, before what we've all, we're all going through with the pandemic, you know, most contact centers, and I say most, but not all, um, were typically in an office environment. You know, that gave insight and visibility into uh, the supervisors working with the agents, you know, and a lot of things were, were in-person coaching and assistance and training. As we've moved into what's kind of a hybrid working model or what may be a new normal for a business, we need to consider that a lot of agents may be working in remote locations, such as their home. They could be working from coffee shops or really creating a, a work from anywhere type environment. You know, in the new normal, supervisors are going to need to monitor agents who work from these locations. And then agents are encountering conditions that they typically didn't, weren't used to dealing with when working in the office. So now more than ever, you know, both agents and supervisors are needing that right tool set for the job. You know, the Jabra headsets allow them to handle these different conditions and address the various detractors and disruptors that they can encounter. So let's take a look at what those might be. If you look at what a normal uh, noise level is within a contact center, um, it measures typically around 65 decibel on average. You know, it could be anywhere from say, you know, 55 to 75. In the new normal, where people are working from various locations, if you look at just a home office environment by itself, you know, they can encounter peak conditions upwards of 90 decibels. You know, and this is with spikes in noise due to, you know, various things happening in the home, people using blenders as such in the kitchen, uh, running into, uh, you know, kids coming through the house, uh, babies crying, dogs barking, etc. You know, I think we can all relate to a time, you know, when we've been on a business call and been disrupted by some form of background noise, whether you are the actual agent, per, you know, providing the call and or uh, you know, have called into a business. The ultimate thing to understand, though, is that those are detractors and can be quite disturbing uh, to the conversation, to the customer experience, and ultimately to uh, the overall success and impression that the customer has of, of your business. Now, it's also important to note that, you know, being able to cancel that background noise that, you know, a caller will hear, it's also important that noise cancellation be understood. It's a two-way street. As an agent, you know, that background noise that is coming through from the caller is also just as disturbing. As a matter of fact, you know, in a recent study that we did, we found that, you know, 85 or 88% of the agents are saying that being able to hear the caller is equally as important as being able to be heard. Now, that's handled through what's called passive noise cancellation. We'll get into that a little bit later uh, as we start looking at how our headsets are built. But it's important to note that that communication really is a two-way street of being able to be heard and hearing. So let's take a look at what you know, is, is happening in a contact center. And it's important to understand the importance of the headset as a professional tool but more importantly, how it impacts other parts of the contact center. 
you know, companies are making huge investments in their contact center platforms, you know, with telephony solutions, bot technology, IVRs, workforce management, call recording systems, transcription and translation services, sentiment analysis tools, you know, the, this to, to name a few. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, it's important to note that embedded in all of those at its foundation, those are reliant on the clarity and quality of the conversations that are happening. Now, ideally, some of these are, are designed as self-service options, and they can help customers move through their interaction with the company, or essentially, if you think of it, kind of flowing down through that funnel. But if they're not able to be handled through self-service, they're ultimately going to get to an agent. And you'll find that the agent interactions now are becoming more and more complex and lasting longer and longer, which means, you know, having a good headset's important. Now, Jabra features quick disconnect and USB headsets. And now we also offer headsets that can provide real-time digital endpoint analytics that are compatible with any contact center platform. These headsets can help companies maximize the performance and investment of the, the tools that I mentioned, like the workforce management, call recording, et cetera. The point I wanna make here is that when you're designing or redesigning or optimizing contact centers with your customers, it's critical that you don't forget about the headset. Otherwise, you're just leaving it to chance that the agent can put any headset on the on the system and you're going to expect that same performance you know that'd be the equivalent of trying to put a wagon wheel on a race car they're both round and they both roll but obviously you're not going to get the same performance out of that race car that you would with a with a regular designed wheel for it now let's take a look at uh a few statistics that we're finding in 2020 uh jabber conducted a survey of over a thousand contact center professionals and here's a representation of some of the things that we uncovered. The, that 86% of the agents are now utilizing customer experience as a key KPI. You know, before it was more around driven by cost and average handle times, you know, reductions and, and how do we get a caller through your center faster? Now they're realizing that the experience that the customer is, is having is is equally important, if not more so than some of the others. You know, calls are becoming longer and more complex. Average handle times are now around nine and a half minutes per call. And the number of calls that agents are handling is increasing as well, averaging about 47, 47 uh, calls per agent per day. Now, interestingly, in the same study, we also spoke to general office workers and found a substantial increase in the number of voice interactions and the length of these interactions amongst general office professionals. You know, pre-pandemic, it was pretty easy to distinguish a contact center agent from a normal office professional. Uh, what you would find is with normal office professionals, they weren't really as call-centric as, as an agent, obviously, and probably talked on average between one to three hours a day on the phone. But with these statistics, you can see with the increase in Microsoft Teams, daily active users increasing by 645%, Zoom meeting minutes going up 3,300%, and the average meeting length lasting 10 minutes longer, it's giving rise to what we're terming as the new call-centric or communication professional. That's somebody who was a previously you know, more of a task-based or professional office worker is now talking if almost as much, if not as much, as your call center agents. So it's important to, when talking with them, to really think about you know, the long-term wear, comfort, and durability of the products that you're offering. And really, that's what contact center products are designed for. Now, in this same study, we also talked to um, the decision makers you know, the buyers, if you will, you know, and ask them what matters most, you know, to the users that they're buying for. What's represented here is the top three things that we uncovered, you know, the quality of the audio, 
the comfort of the of the device, and then obviously the durability and robustness. And that's because these things are, you know, it's kind of like the old Timex thing. They take a licking and keep on ticking. Uh, you know, being able to withstand the rigors of, you know, eight hours of continuous use on, on a daily basis is important. We'll get a little bit more into, you know, these three things as we, we dive into the portfolio. But it's not by coincidence that when we construct our professional headsets for the contact center, this is really the foundational pillars that they're built upon. So let's take a quick peek at the, the portfolio. The, the Jabra contact center series of products start with our biz. They're our corded line uh, of products. Uh, they move into our pro line and then our engage line, which is our digital line of headsets that comes in both corded and wireless options. Now, when talking about the construction of these devices, as I mentioned, uh, we look at it from a perspective of audio build and comfort or what we call the ABCs. Now, the ABCs start with the microphone and the speakers here on the left. You know, Jabra's portfolio products offer, you know, the world's best in both categories. You combine that over here with the, the passive can noise cancellation capabilities that's made by the products we use in the ear cup. And then the materials that we use to construct, you know, the headbands uh, make this comfortable for all day wear and lightweight. So... When you're looking at uh, our products, it's important to note that we also include one other thing that's important for the agent's protection, and that's our safe tone technology. What this does is this protects the wearer from potential damaging effects of high noise levels, spikes in volume, things of, along those lines. We'll touch on safe tone a little bit more as we get into it. And then with our digital line, uh, we all, which is our engage, uh, we also provide an organization with actionable insights into the conversations and actions that occur between agents and customers. This allows them to make business decisions and coaching decisions when working within their business. Now looking at how Jabra handles noise cancellation, we first look at the microphone. Now Jabra places the microphone in the tip of the boom arm. Now we've got two, two microphones in the boom arm, one pointing towards the user's mouth, one on the outside. Now this allows us to distinguish between a user's voice and then any background noise that may be happening and allows us to perform noise cancellation. A lot of our key competitors place the microphone in the ear cup and have a boom tube approach, which is much less effective. Now the Biz 2402 specifically um, comes in an ultra noise cancellation model, which is good for especially noisy environments. Now, one other thing to note here is that there's a difference between noise cancellation and noise suppression. Noise suppression is a technology that's used by a lot of the software-based solutions. Uh, when you're looking at maybe UC or collaboration platforms, they use a suppression type technology. As I mentioned, Jabra is able to filter the noise um, not diminishing the user voice quality, whereas noise suppression and the way it works, if you kind of picture it as a, an audio stream as, as a pipe, noise suppression takes and cancels down or reduces, suppresses that audio stream in its entirety, which is the user's voice as well, which can diminish the overall audio quality of the call. Now let's take a look at a representation of how noise cancellation can impact a business. What we have here is an example uh, of a company that we worked with where we deployed our Biz 2400 two headsets to solve a noise problem. Uh, this is for an outsourced call center where the agents were using low quality headsets. Each bar graph represents a week. The black on the left is the measurements that the business was receiving and customer complaints uh, regarding background noise. They approached Jabra and asked us to, to, to undertake this task to see if we could help them eliminate that background noise and thereby reduce the, the number of complaints. On the right-hand side, you can see a, a progression, a declining progression in the yellow bars 
And that's where the deployment of the Biz 2400 2s began. With the initial deployment, we were literally reduced them by almost half of the projected uh, customer complaints. And by the time a full deployment of the 2402 was complete, we had their, their background noise complaints down to zero. The interesting corollary effect of decreasing the noise and, and, or the background noise and eliminating customer complaints was that also decreased the overall length of the call. There was less agent distraction. There was less repetition in conversation because people weren't able to hear each other. And that also resulted then in an increase in customer satisfaction. Now let's take a look at the why comfort is so important when considering a headset. Try imagining, excuse me, try imagining wearing clothes that are too tight or wearing a pack on your back for six, eight hours straight. It's uncomfortable and it's distracting. It's the same thing when you're wearing the wrong headset. The Jabra headsets are substantially lighter than both consumer and office grade headsets, and they're designed with a lower clamping force and a cooler ear cup design. This allows for comfort and less pressure on the head. And then of course, they're designed to be fit specifically to the agent uh, with extensions on the ear cups and then an expandable um, headband as it goes across the top of the head. I mentioned the, the Safe Tone 2 technology before. Now there's two parts to this. There's the IntelliTone, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, protects the users from hearing, it protects the user's hearing by keeping it at a safe level. It can reduce noise-related stress and improve the overall well-being for the user. I mean, this can directly correlate to user satisfaction, in the, can, can correlate to the performance of their jobs, and help reduce agent turnover and absenteeism in the business. The second part of Safe Tone is the Peak Stop. Now, Peak Stop is a technology that essentially stops audio spikes or harmful noise levels that go above 118 decibels. Sometimes, and we've seen this in the past, companies have this is a protection for companies as well. You know, if agents were to say that they're they're suffering hearing problems because of use of headsets. Having our technology with the Safe Tone 2 really is a business benefit where it not only protects the user, but also protects the business from unfounded claims, uh, you know, of, of hearing loss and, and other things from the business. Our, our solution, the Safe Tone 2, complies with and often surpasses a lot of the strictest regulations uh, and standards that are in the world. So now that we've looked at that, let's jump into the into the product a little bit. We're gonna start with our, our biz series. And the first is our 2402. It's the same one that I mentioned with the, the top outsourcer that we used. It's our top of the line model uh, corded headset with our superior noise canceling technology. Has the great user protection of Safe Tone. Comes in some versatile wearing styles, both duo, mono, uh, three in one, actually has a three in one headband. And then also comes with an ear hook and neck band style. So it's extremely versatile for whatever the user's comfort level is. It comes with the 360 degree flexible spin on the boom arm. Now this is important because it, that eliminates solder joints, which over time from some of our competitors, if you move the boom arm back and forth too much, that solder joint's going to break. This adds to a longevity to the product. And then it also comes with an intuitive call control system that allows for, for agents to do volume control, uh, remote call control directly from the headset itself. And this particular model comes with a three-year warranty. Our next model is the 2300. Again, all the benefits and same great quality of the 2400. Little different in the wearing styles, does come in a mono and duo style, has the same intuitive call control. The difference with this one is that it does come with a two-year warranty. Both options, uh, both the 2400 and 2300 come with USB and or quick disconnect styles. The last in our, our biz lines are 1500. 
This is our most economical uh, of the, the Biz series. Still a great professional grade headset at a value price. And this is an ideal solution for businesses that might experience uh, seasonal spikes in their contact centers. You know, if their, their business is seasonality and they bring people on for shorter periods of time, this would be a great product to recommend for that scenario. Now let's take a look at the Pro 900. This is an excellent option for customers who are looking, you know, for all of the foundational pillars of a solid professional contact center headset, but are looking for some flexibility in, in having it wireless. Uh, it comes in a very lightweight and versatile wearing styles, has a 12 hour talk time on the battery. And it's an excellent choice for the call centric professional as well. That person I mentioned who was normally more of an office-based worker uh, or task-based, but is looking for the same value and benefit. This particular model, the 900, comes in both decked and Bluetooth connectivity. Now, a word of caution when you're looking at, at Bluetooth technology. Um, please pay a particular attention to that. The, the Bluetooth technology is a frequency band that's shared by many devices cell phones, wireless keyboards, mice, et cetera. So it's a very crowded frequency. So when you're talking with your customers, understanding their use case, where they're going to be using it, and the environmentals that it's being used in are gonna be very critical. Jabra does provide uh, wireless density studies as an option that you can use uh, in support of making the, the recommendations to the client. Another thing that I want to point out is that, and it, a lot of it's because of the pandemic buying that occurred, you know, a lot of people back, you know, a year, year and a half ago, were really grabbing any product that they could as everybody moved to a home office. But what we're seeing is that there's quite a few consumer or office grade headsets, which are Bluetooth, being recommended for contact centers. Now, the wireless density is one aspect of it. Jabra's portfolio for contact centers, purpose built for that, for the contact center agent. Again, that audio, that build and that comfort. But also what it does is it provides specific functionality that works with call recordings, transcriptions, agent greetings, recognition and passing of zip tones or whisper tones for call cues, et cetera. Some older models and some non-contact center products may not perform these functions. So be very careful when looking at the products that you're recommending. Now let's take a look at our Engage 50. Our Engage 50 is recognized as our, sorry, widely recognized in the industry and by a force technology as the world's pro best professional digital corded headset. Again, a common thing that you'll see here is the noise cancellation. But also here, it's, it's been validated with the best microphone and best speaker performance of any digital headset out there. As we look a little deeper at the, the Engage 50, you'll notice right here in the center bottom of the screen, it comes with a programmable call control. This is an optional uh, device, but it allows for complete call control for mute, um, start, stop, call recording, and has programmable buttons for queue in, queue out, supervisor assist as some options. You can also see that there's lights on the, both the controller and on the headset. These are programmable uh, and comes in up to seven colors and can be used to you know, influence culture on the floor, indicate agent status, et cetera. Both good for office and home use, where you know, if you have family members nearby, you can educate them on, you know, if I'm, as an example, if I'm red, means I'm on a call, please don't interrupt me, et cetera. And then one of the things that we're working with and seeing in the industry is contact centers using gamification. Being that they are programmable and with some of the analytics that we'll get into here shortly, this is an optimal headset to be used for those purposes. As customers, uh, you know, evaluate their headset selection, attention has to be drawn to the detractors and dissatisfiers that can be prevented. What you're seeing on the screen here is kind of a call flow representation, starting with the placement of the microphone on the agent's headset. 
you know, having that in the optimal place allows for the, 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 the headset to do its job and provide the best audio quality and clarity that it can. But you can see throughout the course of the call, you've got distractions from background noise and interference, uh, perhaps users uh, talking over each other between the agent and the customer, creating crosstalk. You may have silence, uh, and that could be for a multitude of reasons. You know, an agent is looking for an answer, uh, perhaps the agent's asking for supervisor assist, et cetera. And then also, you know, if you're putting customers on hold, or, you know, in consulting a supervisor. These are all possible things in a call flow. Utilizing Jabra's analytics out of our Engage 50 product, and represented down here on the bottom, really allows us to identify these and then for the business to take actionable insights into coaching or improving the interaction with the agent. So let's take a look at what those analytics are. Now that we have shown our headsets as great noise canceling, de canceling devices. Let's see what happens when we apply these analytics to clean, clear voice. Here we've got the main endpoint analytics that you can get from our Engage 50 headset. Let's start on the left. That's noise monitoring. What this does is by having three microphones in the Engage 50 headset, we're able to determine the noise levels going on around the agent. Contact centers can use this information to understand where and when this happens and then take actions to either move calls around it, um, you know, send notices to the agent of the noise around them. Perhaps it's, you know, they're in a tight environment. And they can also use this for staffing purposes across time zones and compare the, these analytics to average hold, handle times and see if noise correlates to longer calls. Now the Engage 50 can also be required for outsourcers. This is something that we've seen. Businesses that are working with outsourcers will utilize this and make this a requirement that they provide that noise level information to, the, to their customer. This protects the brand of the company that they're representing. And it's a, a both one, a benefit that you could use in selling headsets, but also then the business can use as a benefit to attracting new customers because those customers are in, would ensure that their brand is protected from any uh, outside influences such as uh, background noise. On the right, a second analytic is microphone guidance. Now this is an important one because again, in order to get proper sound, that microphone needs to be in its proper place. What you see on the, on the right there is a representation of a, a screen pop that'll happen with the Engage 50 if the microphone's not placed in its proper position. Now, conversation flow here in the center. This is a third analytic and it provides the ability to see if the agent or the customer's talking over each other, uh, if, they're, if there's crosstalk or if there's silence. You know, coaching practices can be designed around silence, which could indicate inactivity. Identifying crosstalk could show breakdowns in communication or even arguments between the customer and the agent. As a fourth metric, understanding behavioral patterns is important, especially when counting as an example, the number of times an agent mutes during a call. You know, so as an example, using all analytics together, imagine an agent who mutes the call five times. Did that correspond to five spikes in the background noise decibel levels? Maybe from a household noise or family member walking in with friends. Uh, that's something that you know I've had happen here. It, it, it allows you and allows the agent to start trusting in the device and to focus on the task at hand. When the mic's properly placed, it eliminates background noise. Where there's more silence that happened with prolonged mutes, did a call drop, and ha after multiple mutes. These are all questions that the job or devices can help solve so that supervisors can gain visibility and insight and to provide coaching and, and or appropriate staffing adjustments. Now let's take a look. I mentioned earlier uh, gamification. Again, these so are solutions you can customize using Jabra's open APIs. You can see the lights that can be attributed to any status or metric uh, as data is pushed to the headset. 
This creates opportunities for motivating agents, both in the contact center and at home, um, using lights to level up in games. You can align the dashboard color designations, tracking of agent uh, average handle times, net promoter scores, revenue generated, or repeated calls via green, red, or yellow designations in a racing game as illustrated here on the left. Extending these statuses to the headset can help contribute to the game, even for the home agent who might, who might see the Engage 50 controller light up for any number of reasons. Another idea is to gamify sales agents, aligning sales performance statuses to the headset colors based on revenue levels. This helps the supervisor identify agents who, need, who might need help. So this dashboard is visible both to the agent and to uh, the supervisor in real time. Now, here's a few ideas on how to use the analytical data. Perhaps the color blue represents the new who the new agents are, and maybe green represents the tenured ones with over five years of experience. So they can be used as resources, that's one way. Perhaps to control noise, the colors switch from green to yellow to red based on the decibel levels as indicated by the headset. This lets the agent or neighbors or family members adjust in the noise levels in an environment to be able to improve customer experience. You can also identify inbound outbound agents, for example, or who is, who is on which queue. Really the possibilities are endless. And when we talk about what we can do with open APIs, we really like to talk about the art of the possible. Each, age, each contact center really has some foundational similarities, but each one is very much its own independent center and operates against its own set of metrics that it's trying to measure to. The Jabra endpoint analytics really allow that to extend all the way through to the, to the agent in real time and can be used for both you know, coaching and gamification purposes. If you're looking for ways to make positive and impactful change for your business, I recommend to you to measure for yourself the benefits of what our contact center products can do. You can contact any Jabber representative to schedule an appointment or use my email here that's on the slide, message me. You know, we'd love to hear from you. See how we can help you help your customers. I want to thank each of you for your time today. And I believe we're going to open it up for some questions, Bruce. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Uh, but before we get to the questions, why don't you uh, one more time remind attendees how they can reach Jabra for more information? Uh, you can reach out to, if you have a Jabra representative, you can contact them or you can contact me via email at mmciver, it's M-M-C-I-V-E-R, at jabra.com. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, my address is there on the screen, linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash Mike McIver. The one thing I have to admit I didn't put on here is my phone number. So if you have a pen and paper handy, I can give that to you at this time. And that number is 978-606-2249. Okay, great. Uh, I'd also like to introduce right now, Danielle Brannon. Uh, contact center program manager for Jabra, who's going to be joining Mike to answer some of the questions. And Mike, the first question is just, uh, it just, it begs an answer. Uh, the attendee wants to know, what model headset are you using? Um, actually, right now I am talking on an Engage 50. Um, I do not have the optional controller, uh, which honestly is something that I am going to get because you can see the where my head, where my PC is compared to where I'm sitting in my chair, it's a, it's a little tight on the cord. Uh, so I do recommend the optional controller, if nothing more for that purpose. <laughs> All right. Um, can you tell us some ways that you can demonstrate to a customer that you can lower average handle time with noise cancellation? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, noise cancellation, it has to be understood that it helps with concentration by mitigating distracting noises and allows for clearer conversation. This in turn allows the mitigation, also mitigates having to repeat things because someone couldn't hear you. 
Now, one way that I like to demonstrate this is simply by having a stopwatch. And I either have it in my hand or I'll pull it up on the screen. And as a matter of fact, why don't I do that here? So, we can... so one thing that, that I like to do with, uh, in talking with customers is if, to demonstrate having to repeat something. So if I were to ask, you know, Bruce, could you, could you ask that question again one more time, please? Um, what, are, what are some ways you can demonstrate to a customer that you can lower average handle time with noise cancellation? Okay, so what I just did right there, you can see I had the stopwatch on the screen and I asked you to repeat something in the course of a conversation and then you repeated it back to me. That took 12 seconds. So if you have that happen in a call, that's increasing handle time. So by having clarity of audio and eliminating distractions in the background, you actually have the ability to reverse that effect and lower the handle time. Now, one of the things that, you know, as a, most people would probably say is that you don't, that doesn't happen on every call. And that's, that's probably a true statement. But if it happened every fifth call or every 10th call, you know, take that and divide it. You're, you're saving between 1.2 and 2.4 seconds per call. Now, I think you'd be surprised that in a contact center, when you're talking average handle time, that's a huge amount. And mm -hmm. we actually at Jabra have an ROI calculator based all around this. And this is how we start our discussion around that. So we did come to a determination of what is an agreeable amount of reduction in handle time that you can accomplish by simply not having to repeat things in a conversation. And then from there, we're able to extrapolate that through, you know, the impact it would have on a contact center and we can look at it both from a reduction in handle time, an improvement in productivity, the corollary effects of that from a financial standpoint, and then take that against the investment that you would make in a Jabber headset. It's a very powerful story. And, and you know, that's a tool that we can use with, with any of the partners. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to walk you through it. Okay. Uh, can you tell us what the difference is between a contact center headset and a non-contact center headset? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, as I mentioned in the presentation, contact center headsets are really built around audio, the build, uh, meaning what materials are used and, and the comfort. So, you know, I'm wearing the Engage 50. I also have here with me, this is our Biz 1500. Very nice foam ear cushions. You can see that the headband is very thin, which creates light weight on the user. And then it's adjustable. You know, I can actually push here and move this out. You know, if, if I had an agent who maybe had a little wider head, honestly, I have a huge head. You probably can tell from the video. <laughs> um, but this is a way to really make and take that fit and customize it to the individual. Now, I also have here, one of our um, Evolve products. Now this is a, a, a great product, but it's not designed for the contact center professional. You can see that it's got a very nice cushiony, comfortable headband, very nice, comfortable ear cushions. They are larger, uh, they're made of a different material, but they do not, this is not adjustable. This will snap back, this type of, uh, office or professional grade headset is really designed for shorter term wear. So it has a greater clamping force down on the head. And, you know, I would encourage anybody honestly to take a, an office grade headset and a purpose built contact center headset and try it for yourself. See if you can wear this for eight hours a day. I guarantee you the comfort level and what you're going to find in the overall quality and satisfaction is going to lead you to a professional headset. Can you explain some of the advantages your product has over competitors? 
yeah, I think it's it's the noise cancellation um, is just far superior. Um, that's one. But I would say the endpoint analytics within it is the other that we have that um, other competitors don't have. Um, it, those endpoint analytics can provide a wealth in information into a contact center to help agents to impact customer experience. Okay. Um, and while, while you're speaking now, why don't we go to this next question? What uh, financial metrics do you recommend that, uh, that the user can use to convince his bosses to approve of something like this? Biggest one that I that comes to mind is how can a headset reduce average handle time? Because that's going to be a financial metric, but it's also going to improve your customer satisfaction. So if you can show that you can reduce handle time by however many seconds with this headset, that equates to full time equivalent dollars, and it translates into staff, which can help make leader help leaders make decisions moving forward. Hmm. Okay. Um, what about additional cost to gamification functions? Is there any additional cost to that? So it de depending on the platform that you use and the, the company, I mean, if you have our, op our APIs are open and they are, they are free. So those don't have the additional costs. Um, but you would have to either build the gamification or um, uh, seek out a vendor that provides the gamification. But our APIs do not have an additional cost to them. Oh, OK. Yeah, if, um, if I could add to that, Bruce, sure. I, I think that, no, that's a perfect answer. But I think it's really, uh, as a partner, it's an opportunity to increase your, your stickiness to your customer. It's an opportunity to increase revenue and to have another, uh, another go-to-market strategy with your client. Uh, now, if your company doesn't have its own developers, because as, as Danielle said, our APIs are, are free um, to our partner community and to, and to customers, but what you do with those is where the opportunity lies. And that can be done through partnerships with third-party companies if you have your own in-house development um, you know, again, that just creates uh, additional opportunity for your business. Um, here's an interesting uh, question from one of our attendees. He noticed that on his wireless jobber headset that the battery life is very long. Uh, he hasn't changed it in more than a month and it still says strong. So how important was that in developing the product set? Well, obviously you know, we're always trying to increase battery life. Um, uh, that's amazing, honestly, that it's lasted a month. Uh, but it all goes back to talk time. Um, and that's really where the drain on the batteries occur, you know, when the, the actual headsets in use as they're, you know, if you have it just lying on your desk, as an example, um, then it's not going to be draining that battery. It's really when it's in use. Okay. Um, what are some areas you have used a jobber device successfully and canceled the noise and, and how good is it really? Danielle, you want to take that one or you want me to? <laughs> I mean, we both can. I mean, so <laughs> one thing that our team did um, to, to do it successfully is we have, we actually had several meetings where I was in a coffee shop. Mike was in a busy and loud shopping mall. And other than seeing the background, I couldn't hear it at all. And I don't think he could hear the coffee grind or, or the people talking around me. So I work from a coffee shop probably one or two days a week. Most people have no idea that I'm there. Um, additionally, I have two dogs sitting behind this door that you see. And they constantly are making noise because one is a puppy. So she's very active. Um, also, right now, my vacuum cleaner is banging on that door right now, and you guys probably are unable to hear it. That's, that's incredible. Okay. Um, now, some of these sets plug into USB and some plug into the headphone port. Uh, what's the difference, if any? Well, actually, our product line um, is built with quick disconnect uh, capability. 
which you know allows for optional cord types and connections to your PC or your or your desk phone. Um, utilize our contact center portfolio does not use the headset jack uh, or the typical you know uh, what is a 3.5 millimeter jack style. So we are USB A, USB C, and or uh, quick disconnect uh, that connects to a specific PC or, or phone type. The, we have an actual compatibility guide at jabber.com forward slash compatibility. If you have uh, any questions, if you're connecting to a, an Avaya phone or a Cisco phone or a poly, uh, you know, a polycom phone, uh, any of those we can address. Okay. Um, here's a question for you. How can I get access to the APIs and customize the analytics for my customers? That's a great question. Um, we have a website. If you go to develop HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash developer dot Jabra dot com, um, you would need to register. Um, once you, you complete the registration and access is granted, you have full access into our software development kit, um, all of the open APIs and all of the notes associated with uh, the capabilities there. Okay, great. And uh, our last question, uh, if I have an agent that's working both at home and in office, how can I make sure they're getting the right headset? Well, the easy answer is to buy two. Um, you know, <laughs> so that's kind of the easy one. But, um, you know, our, our, our headsets are designed for that versatility to work both at home and in office. Um, so if it depends what you're connecting to in, in the office versus connecting to at home, um, you know, as an example, uh, some of our wireless engage um, has the ability, it's got a base unit that connects to the PC, but then if you were to take that on the road with you, it also, has, also comes with a cord where, you know, you could plug it into your PC if you're sitting at a coffee shop like Danielle does quite often, um, and then it'll charge from the PC. Again, I would encourage people as you're looking at these different use cases, um, talk with your, your normal Jabber representative, or you can reach out to myself, Danielle. Um, and I have to apologize, we don't have Danielle's contact info on there. Um, maybe Danielle, if you wanna provide that. Oh, um, it, it's dbrandon at jabra.com, so. Yeah, we're pretty simple here at Jabra. First initial, last name, so. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. That, that's going to wrap up today's webinar. Um, our thanks to Mike McIver, Business Development Manager from Jobber's Contact Center Solutions Team, and to Danielle Brannon for joining us, the Contact Center Program Manager. Thank you both. Thanks, Bruce. Really appreciate you having us. And now from all of us at Channel Vision Magazine and from Jobra, thank you for attending. Have a safe and prosperous day.